could we please just cancel the rest of cruising for 2020? I mean, that that's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing people assert. Let's just cancel cruising for 2020. Today's episode of the La Lita Loca Cruise Show, let's break down that assertion. Should we cancel cruising for 2020? And why? <laughs> Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. Uh, I'll be your host for the next few minutes. If you enjoyed that travel and cruising content, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Well, they've stood on the rooftops. They've, they've said it loud and clear. Let's cancel cruising for 2020. And I say, shut up. What a dumb idea. But instead of just being uh, obtrusive, instead of just using the shut up language, let me do my best to lay out some reasons why shutting down cruising for 2020 is not the right approach. First of all, cruising is a very profitable business. The only reason that cruising is suffering currently is because there is a global pandemic that has caused most of the businesses in the world that are deemed non-essential to shut down. So right out of the gate, let me just say, I think cruising is still viable in the new normal. There certainly will be new health protocols, new processes in place to deal with the current virus. And yeah, there's people out there saying cruising is dead. And I just think you're wrong. The math does not add up on this. Cruising will return. The cruise lines have put money in the coffers to ride out a partial shutdown, a period of time where no revenue comes in. Read the news. People are giving the cruise lines billions of dollars so that they can ride out this storm. Either everybody in the world is stupid with their money or there could be some viability that cruising will return. So slow down on the cruising is dead language. Find a better argument. And I think people have shifted over to let's just shut down cruising for 2020. You know, let's just make a decision for the next seven months based on information that's changing daily. That makes sense. If you'd gone back to January, if you'd gone back just four months, nobody knew what was going to happen from week to week. And that's very much the same situation. So either you have to assume that for the next seven months, nothing is going to get better, or you're going to have to assume that things are going to change, which may give you different pieces of information to make decisions on. Seems reasonable. Just shuttering a business for seven months based on data that you have right now is just crazy. It's not the way it's done. But I'll play the game. Let's just assume that we know for sure that there's going to be no cruising for 2020. Should you still cancel all the cruises? No, it does not make sense. Look, and I am talking to you from a biased perspective in the same way that I believe people that are hating on cruising, they're talking from a biased perspective. You're not really trying to find the middle ground. You just hate cruising and therefore you just want it to be all negative. But let's even take cruising out of it from a business perspective. If you want a business to be viable, the last thing you want to do is cripple it. And canceling all cruises for the next seven months definitely would cripple it. It would cripple it in a few ways. For example, if you come out today and announce that cruising will be canceled for the next seven months, the stock price is going to tank. In a situation where you're trying to stay financially viable, coming out with some news that is predictive and prescriptive for the next seven months when everybody in the world knows that you can't predict past the next couple days, it's going to kill the stocks. It's also going to kill customer confidence. Right now, people are continuing to book cruises into the future. Uh, I've seen it firsthand. There are people on the phone every day slotting up cruises for 2021, 2022. Cruising is still viable for people who love cruising, and it is not slowed down. And if you come out and all of a sudden say, look, we know what's going to happen for the next seven months, and we're calling it all off, you're going to crush the confidence of people who love cruising. And there's a lot of people who love cruising. He would also crush the hopes of so many workers and so many economies that benefit from the cruising industry. 
The cruising industry is just not the cruise companies. It's just not the cruise ships. Cruising is one of those things that generate revenue for local economies. They generate revenue for port cities. They're a big player of tourism around the world. And many people beyond people who work for the cruise lines uh, make their living, are employed because of the cruise industry. If all of a sudden today you announce that you're going to cancel for the rest of 2020, more than half of a year based on information that is questionable at best, you will start a ripple effect that will have dramatic ramifications uh, all over the globe. And then there's the operational perspective. These cruise lines are already struggling working from home. They've closed down their corporate office. They have all the call centers working remotely. And you are working through this scenario of rolling cancellations. Cruise lines are announcing 30 days, 60 days at a time. And when they announce those cancellations, it triggers an operational work process where someone has to process a cancellation for either a refund or a future cruise credit. If they use a future cruise credit, that often involves a rebooking. All of those are processes that take bandwidth, that take manpower, that leverage the operational infrastructure that these companies have in place to get the job done. And if all of a sudden you canceled seven months worth of cruising, that operational infrastructure would be so overwhelmed that there would be no way that they could serve their customers. It's already challenged in the 30 to 60 day rolling cancellations where they've put people on the telephones that are brand new, people on the telephones that aren't as experienced. Uh, It's a struggle just in the way that they're doing it now. All of a sudden, if you canceled seven months worth of cruising it it would be a nightmare and again people are booking cruises for 2021 and 2022 all of a sudden you overwhelm your operational infrastructure with these cancellations these rebookings now customers that are wanting to book into 2021 2022 they're going to have trouble doing that also and uh, it's going to bring everything to a grinding halt To me, all this seems obvious, and so when I hear people say, let's just cancel cruising all the way through 2020, it seems like a knee-jerk reaction, and it doesn't seem well thought out. Uh, I don't mean anything disrespectful by that, but I have struggled to find an argument put forth by anybody in the comments or anything that I've read that really makes sense for canceling cruising all at once for the next seven months based on the information that we have today. And of course, that's my opinion, and I welcome you guys to chime in in the comments. Uh, I do enjoy reading them, but there's sometimes I come across these comments, and I'm like, none of this makes sense, uh, what they're saying. There's so many people that are dead sure. Can I... Can I coach a little bit on how to have an argument? You got to use some language which seems like you want to have a dialogue. I've I've read comment after comment. uh, The cruise lines are bankrupt. You know it. The cruise lines are never going to reopen. This is 100% true. Uh, You lose the argument at that point. Like Nobody will want to even listen to your opinion when you lead with such a blanket statement. Uh, Just even softening that language a little bit. Uh, It seems to me that the cruise lines could go bankrupt. Looking at the numbers, I think the cruise lines will go bankrupt. Leave some sort of possibility that a dialogue could exist because the person that just comes out and asserts something about the future, which is unknown, uh, I don't think anybody pays much attention to that. So I don't know if your goal is just to troll and just to put some stuff down in the comments. I think that's fine. But if you're looking to influence, if you're looking to have a conversation, if you're looking for your thoughts to mean something to somebody else, I would just use a little bit different language. That's all I'm saying. Uh, But yeah, fair game. The comments are open. But it's not just me spouting off here. I did do a poll in the La Lita Loca cruising community and on the YouTube community here. Uh, We talked about it before. These audiences are a little different. The La Lita Loca cruising community, primarily pro cruising people. And then here you have a mixed bag on YouTube. Here's what the people at the La Lita Loca cruising community said. There were uh, over 500 votes uh, and the majority, 437 people said don't cancel cruising for 2020. And there were 89 people that said yes please do cancel cruising for 2020 and then again uh, more reflective of uh, a little anti-cruising here on youtube uh, it was close 49 percent said yes just cancel cruising for 2020 and 51 percent said no way and that was uh, over a thousand votes there on youtube so what do you think about what i put forth here are these some reasons that you think that cruising should stay open for 2020 or do you think they're just hogwash
uh, leave a comment below. What are some reasons I've missed out on? What have I missed? Uh, you guys will tell me. I know for sure. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of the La Lita Loca Cruise Show. Show your support for the show by hitting the like button. Now, I did make this video about whether social distancing was possible on cruise ship. That's That's got some interesting comments, over 300 comments. Uh, watch that video, read the comments, and then YouTube thinks you should watch this video. Again, thank you so much. My name's Tony, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.